Bergmuller's Opus 100, 25 Easy and Progressive Studies is a staple of repertoire for students of piano. And unfortunately, I think, the pieces in the set seem to be left after a quick learn or maybe a few years of study, and then they never get returned to. I looked around YouTube for some comments on how difficult people think that Bergmuller is, and uh, I gotta say, some of what I found I think is quite hilarious, but we're gonna get to that at the end of the video. Let's get into the three reasons you're never too good for Bergmuller's Opus 100. Number one, when your level of playing and the piece's difficulty level match when they coincide. These pieces should really give you a great workout. If you hold yourself to a high standard, just one of these one or two page long pieces will probably take you months of practice to achieve proficiency. And that proficiency will probably be around half of the tempo marked on the page. Here's a quick example of the quality of performance I'd expect as a teacher from a level two pianist playing arabesque number two in the set. was decently performed, but if we nitpick, it was very slow, far slower than the tempo that's marked on the page. And there were inconsistencies in a variety of ways throughout the piece. There were unmusical accents that were thrown in in various places. There were inconsistencies in rhythms throughout, both in the right hand and the left hand. In the left hand, we had even missed strikes of chords where not all three notes in the chord were played exactly simultaneously. There were fluffy, let's say. Now, all that said, I think most people would agree that this was a very acceptable and proficient performance from a level two pianist. Now, moving on, number two, when your proficiency level is beyond where Bergmuller is typically listed, revisiting a piece in Opus 100 is a fantastic way to continue to better your technique. Personally, I think until you're playing RCM diploma level or Henley level seven and up, I guarantee you there are still things you can learn from Bergmuller's Opus 100. You can still learn how to execute these studies more virtuosically. You can learn how to increase the tempo of these studies to the maximum. And you can work on perfecting your sense of phrase. And best of all, you can do all this with some wonderfully short music where learning the notes themselves doesn't take you ages. So in just a day or two, you can go straight from notes and rhythms into the finer and more subtle details of music making. This is why I'll still give selections from Opus 100 to my students who are RCM seven and up. We might only work on a piece from the set for two weeks or a month instead of the four to six months that we might spend on one piece of rep otherwise, but we get an opportunity to talk about some really advanced musical concepts immediately. Here's a quick example of the quality of performance that I'd expect at this level. So here we have a quicker tempo than we had in the first performance. And you can tell, obviously, there's much more dexterity in the fingers and there are more musical choices being made throughout the performance. But there are still some things that aren't super great. The left hand is just really heavy, far heavier than it should be. And the slurs that are written for the left hand, they aren't being executed all that well. Number three, when you reach diploma level beyond possibly even professional artist level. Bergmuller's Opus 100 are great tests of sight reading. At this level of proficiency, we really should be able to capture complete nuance in the first sight read of any of the 25 pieces in the set. And possibly even, if you wanted to work this muscle, have pieces memorized within about 10 minutes or less. So if you want a sight reading challenge that's less about reading a whole bunch of notes, and more about making performance quality music at first sight. Revisiting Opus 100 is a great place to look. 
Here's one last example to listen to a concert pianist playing the same piece of music after only about five minutes of looking at it. Some food for thought for all of you. Those three recordings that I just played you, those were all played by not students, but all three of them were professional pianists and professional piano teachers. Did they all sound perfect to you? Those first two that we listened to, if those were my students, I'd say, we really have a long way that we could go in perfecting this music. Hence the title of this video, why Bergmüller? Why you're never too good for Bergmüller's Opus 100, even as professionals. All right, now that we've covered my three reasons, let's take a look at a couple of those comments I pulled up uh, about just one of the pieces in this set. All right, this one says they learned <laughs> one of the pieces in one day. Uh, and another one, two days. Another one said, um, it's actually really easy. And one more for us. I played it really well on the third day. I can't help but laugh because I never knew the world was so full of concert level artists who go out and listen to Bergmuller on YouTube. Look, if you're playing any of Opus 100 in a single day and you're playing them flawlessly, you're a concert pianist or you're very close to being at that level of, of pianism. And if you aren't playing it flawlessly, and I mean, Perfect articulation, perfect phrasing, perfect dynamic changes, no tension in the playing mechanism, perfect strikes of chords between the fingers like we talked about. Literally think Deutsche Grammophon, perfect. Literally, you can't tell, anyone can't tell if it's you playing or if it's your favorite concert pianist. If it's not there, don't brag and claim to have played the piece in a single day. Making music isn't playing notes and rhythms. It's so much more than that. If you're working on some Bergmiller yourself, I have two great masterclasses to point you to, and they are right over here. You've been watching Pianist Academy, where we practice smarter, not harder. I'll see you in the next video.